guys, so this is my Porter Cable um, drill press that I've highlighted a few times now in various uh, videos I've made. And um, one thing I did recently was replace the uh, Arbor adapter. Um, I was using the factory supplied one and uh, noticed a little bit of run out more so than I was uh, really uh, willing to cope with. So uh, what I'm doing here is I have my new Arbor adapter provided by uh, McMaster Car. It's a number two Morse taper to a number three Jacobs taper. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use this wedge piece here to drive it through. And uh, it drops the, uh, the spindle right out. So I'm going to go ahead and separate the chuck from the uh, Arbor adapter. I use a press to do that so that everything goes nice and smoothly. Um, you could hammer it out, but you end up denting the, the, uh, the Arbor end up. So I'm going to go pop this out. And what I'm going to do is put the uh, original Porter cable unit in there. Um, it's from Taiwan or China. And uh, I'm going to measure the runout with a dial indicator and uh, do a before and after based on this arbor uh, and the other arbor, the original arbor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press that out now. All right, so uh, here I've got the uh, original arbor on the left and the replacement arbor on the right. I'm not sure based on the lighting if you're going to be able to see that or not, but uh, the one on the left has some uh, wear marks where you can tell the, uh, the arbor was high. And the one on the right, which I've now used a bunch, has no wear marks. So if nothing else, this new arbor here, arbor adapter here, is uh, a lot more consistent across the taper than, than this one is, um, based solely on the wear points on the arbor adapter itself. I'm going to set up my dial indicator here to, to read against the shaft and rotate the shaft by hand. This dial indicator is a Mercer um, Brown and Sharp Tesa unit. Um, it reads in tenths of thousands, so 0 .0001 inches uh, per increment. So when you see this moving, keep that in mind. And I'll, and I'll go over that in a little bit here in a second. So what I'm going to do now is uh, drive the uh, original arbor up inside the drill press. All right, so whenever placing an arbor in the, uh, in the drill press, <clears throat> really all you have to do is uh, go ahead and let the arbor, uh, or let the uh, quill up. Well, I'll leave it down so you can see through the window. But um, all, you, all you got going on here is the arbor, um, it's, it's got a, key, a keyway on the end, this flat here. So when you put it up inside the quill, it's going to key itself. Um, so find, find the keyway, and you can tell that by rotating it, okay? And you should always keep this clean. I know this is clean, I just wiped it down with uh, some acetone and a rag. But always keep this clean and always keep the uh, receiving uh, side clean, else any little piece of metal is going to throw your, uh, your, your rotation off, and that can cause headaches down the road. So um, once you have it up there, a simple rubber mallet, a couple wax, and uh, you're good. I always confirm by just turning it on, making sure everything's been true. If you had a piece of metal or something in there, you'd, you'd actually be able to see it uh, run out. Um, you can kind of see it in person here. I don't know if it's going to be picked up with the camera. So now I'm going to go ahead and set up the uh, dial indicator and show you how we're going to read that surface. Okay, so I know this is hard for you guys to read because the uh, indicator's at an angle. But um, if you trust me enough, this is basically on zero. Um, <clears throat> this particular dial is really fussy because it, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is on a scale of 0 0.0001, three zeros and a one, which is a single tenth of thousandth uh, increment. Okay, So keep that in mind when we get the figures we're going to get here because uh, you're going to realize um, how, how true this machine runs. But um, so. It's set up on the angle of the taper, um, perpendicular to the taper, and uh, we're going to go ahead and rotate this. Um, I'm going to make a little mark here on the pulley indicating uh, 12 o'clock. Okay, so we're at 12. I'm going to go ahead and reset the uh, indicator. All right, so we're at 12 o'clock here, and I'm going to go to uh, 3 o'clock. So we're going from zero 
and we're down about seven increments, okay? So that's seven tenths of a thousandth. So now we're going to go to six o'clock. And we're still at about seven, about six thousandths, six tenths of a thousandth. Okay, and now this is about nine o'clock. So two tenths of a thousandth. Back to 12, should be somewhere around zero. So let's just go around again. Okay, so here's 12. We're about a thousandth off from zero, or a tenth of a thousandth off from zero. I'm not going to try and dial it in too much. But uh, I'm literally at 12 o'clock. So here is 3 o'clock. Where's 3 o'clock? Here's 3 o'clock. So about 5, 6, 7, 7 to 8 tenths of a thousandth over to 6 o'clock. About six tenths over to nine o'clock, about two tenths to one tenth, and then twelve o'clock is, is zero tenths. So a total out of uh, about eight, eight tenths of a thousandth, okay? So if you figure you pick a mean, you're, you're about plus or minus uh, three and a half to four thousandths. Um, pretty decent, actually, but uh, we're going to switch the. Uh, Arbor adapter and try out the uh, McMaster unit, which is definitely a better finish and a better uh, taper, and we'll see what we get out of that. All right, so I uh, I have the uh, McMaster Arbor, which is definitely a finer finish and smoother taper or more linear taper. Um, you can see through here is the keyway. That's where I was putting this little uh, ramp metal piece to dislodge the uh, arbor. Okay, everything's cleaned up with no debris on it, and give it a couple wax. Now note, I'm using a uh, rubber mallet for that, else you risk uh, damaging both the arbor and the quill. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the uh, indicator again. All right, guys, so again, you're gonna have to trust me on this a little bit, but uh, that's pretty much zeroed out. Now you'll see that when I push on the table, um, I can get a little bit of a rotation of the dial here so it's it's not a perfect test so you know keep that in mind this is a tenth of a thousandth and it's very sensitive but uh so we're, we're at negative one at 12 o'clock we're going to go to uh negative or sorry we're going to go to three o'clock and we're at negative three thousand tenths of a thousand six o'clock we're at Six tenths. Nine o'clock, we're at negative one tenth. And then 12 o'clock again, we're at zero. So I went from going, I forget the exact figures on the other setup, on the other arbor, but it was something like four and a half thousandths. Now I'm going from six to zero tenths of a thousandth might even be five. Nah, it's about six. Five to six tenths. Um, so I'm going from five or six tenths run out negative to zero to one tenth run out positive. Splitting the difference, I'm between three and four thousandths instead of four and a half, four to four and a half thousandths. So this Arbor adapter um, not only provides a better surface for the uh, chuck to sit on, but it also provides a couple tenths of thousandths uh, run out removal. You take your chuck, I think you can see this here, yep. You take your chuck using the rubber mallet side, give it a couple wax, and you'll notice that I have the, uh, the jaws up. Make sure your jaws are always up when you do anything like this. That way you're only hitting the body of the uh, chuck and you're not damaging the jaws. Okay, so with the, uh, the chuck put on with the uh, McMaster provided arbor adapter, again, here's the, uh, the original guy. And you can see 
the uh, the markings here, um, indicating that nothing, or not indicating nothing, indicating that it was only touching in some spots. Anytime you see kind of a glossy, polished surface on a tapered shank like this, means that you've got areas that are touching and slipping on there as you you know you hammer it in. Um, whereas <clears throat> if you have a complete engagement across a uh, a length, you shouldn't really see any markings. Um, the whole thing should wear evenly. So with the new chuck in place and the or sorry, the new arbor adapter in place and the new chuck in place, um, the belt's tension backed up. You'll see you have a nice smooth run out down here. Um, you might see that this has a little bit of run out on this surface here, up here, but that's the uh, the guy that closes down the uh, the jaws. So that comes into manufacturing quality right there. Um, I think you can see that, yeah. Um, what you're most concerned about is that the jaws spin true and this guy spins true. This is the body of the chuck and the jaws obviously hold your bit. Um, so if you can get these guys trued up, then you can get a good finish on your bit. Um, if you were trying to ream a hole or something, you might want to measure your, your true run out at the tip of the reamer. Um, but again, remember, we're using a drill press here. We're not using a mill. And uh, quite frankly, if I had to ream something, I'd probably do it in my lathe, um, if it were cylindrical anyway. Um, pick up a four jaw if it were square. Uh, but anyway, so hopefully that uh, provides some information for some people. Um, 15 bucks, I removed a couple thousands or a couple tens of thousands of run out in my uh, drill setup. I am probably going to step up to a keyless chuck. Um, I know it seems silly, but I'm probably going to put an Albrecht on here. Um, Albrecht uh, keyless unit, stainless steel. Um, you know, keep this chuck handy so that if I ever sell this drill press, I can unload it with the standard chuck, as most people will not want a $300 chuck with a $300 drill press. 